Uh, let's see, since the early 90s, co-ops across the country have been collaborating in a structured and organized way. It first started when a couple of GMs got together to form the first Cooperative Grocers Association. Then all of those CEGAs formed and uh, a national organization and NCG was born. The birth of NCG was transformational for co-ops across the US and for Green Tree specifically. As a small store in the middle of Michigan, NCG meant we were able to leverage the purchasing power of all those other co-ops. As a GM, NCG meant I had access to the greatest brains of the food co-op movement. Uh, it meant that my staff had access to professional development opportunities, and so did I, um, and that we got to share and learn from our peers in a new way. And when I think about that transition um, and how it impacted our customers, I think it was transformational for them too. Not only did it mean better prices, but a more professional staff that had access to resources, therefore they had access to resources. So all of that kind of affected, I think, our customers' experience. <clears throat> Prior to NCG, many of the co-ops in this room were part of the Great Lakes CGA, um, and we used to have separate meetings and bylaws. When NCG forms, formed, most of the regional CGAs kind of dissolved, but the Great Lakes group uh, wanted to keep working together. We saw a benefit in staying connected to each other in our co-ops. I like to say that we're like the 80s band that won't stop having a reunion show. We just keep putting on the leather pants. <laughs> um, so I've been a part of this group for about 10 years and we've done a variety of projects together uh, from, uh, we did Fair Harvest Jam, which was a, uh, we collaborated with Food for Thought out of Northern Michigan and the idea being that we had a product on the shelf that were the, uh, that it, it was throughout the supply chain people were paid fairly. Um, it's no longer available, but it was a good idea and we did it. Um, we've also done joint marketing, uh, NPR support, print advertising, and then we've created professional development opportunities for our staff. And then throughout the years, we take the time to get together and visit each other's store at least once a year. So we have a pretty strong history of collaboration and working together, but if I were to go back to my 80s band analogy, I'd say we haven't put out a new album in about a decade or so. <laughs> uh, and what I mean by that is our work together is sort of stagnant. <clears throat> the things we're doing are fine. They're more helpful than harmful, but they certainly aren't transformational. And, and as we know, in the case of the East Lansing Food Co-op, our work isn't going to save another co-op from going under. Um, and why is that? My opinion is we have this barrier when it comes to working together and it comes in all sorts of forms and it's different for each co-op. Um, I think it's even sometimes confused with one of the cooperative principles and I'd say it's independence, this attachment to independence. We're fiercely independent sometimes. It's, again, in my opinion, this attachment to control that prevents us from taking our relationships with each other to the next level and also on the national level with NCG. Um, it makes sense, we're values-driven organizations and with values often come emotions and we tend to get emotionally attached to a lot of parts of running a grocery store, whether it's our processes or our procedures or our products. <clears throat> we don't wanna lose control of setting prices, choosing products, putting together displays, picking colors if it's branding. Um, but it's almost like we're the courting couple in a romantic relationship. <laughs> in a, I'm sorry, we're the courting couple in a romantic comedy. So it's all fine and good until like you want to bring your toothbrush over or you want to move the furniture and then all, you know, and then all of a sudden we got problems. Um, in the Great Lakes group, everything is fine when it's a gentle suggestion or a recommendation. But if you were to tell me that I have to do something, like it kind of stops there. Um, I said, pack your bags, I'm swiping left. <laughs> you might get that. <laughs> anyway, um, so we know this type of like courting relationship has limits, and I think we leave a lot on the table as we continue to hold on to those pieces that we believe are significant to our independence, and they're really just basics of retail. We spend a lot of time and money on processes and procedures that I would argue don't really benefit our customers. If on an individual store level, we got rid of some of the things that were just basics of retail, like 
pricing or finance or even HR, imagine what we could free ourselves or our staff up to do instead. Imagine the type of customer experience that we could create. <clears throat> So kind of like Mark said earlier, in 10 years from now, if we were to look back at 2018 and see that there was another transformational step taken by the group to collectively start working together, what would that look like? What could it be? Is our attachment to independence a benefit to our customers or a cost? If we're truly in this together, like I believe we've agreed we are, do we have a better chance of changing the world and creating a robust cooperative economy by being independent or by working together? Thank you, Sarah.